this is part three of section 3.2. We want to graph this polynomial function. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it around so that we are in descending power order. So I start off with negative x to the fifth, and then I have minus x cubed plus 6x. The degree of this, it's our largest exponent, which is a 5. And our leading coefficient is negative 1. Okay. So the first thing we are supposed to do is we are supposed to look at the uh, leading coefficient test so we can find the end behavior. Our degree is five, which is odd. So we're gonna have one of these two options. And our leading coefficient is a negative number. So we're going to have something like this. And the, so it rises left. And falls to the right. Which basically is this kind of shape where various things can happen in the middle there, but you're going to have coming in from the top on the left and then exiting on the bottom on the right. Okay. Part two. This is we should find our x-intercepts and then decide whether we touch or cross at each one. Okay, that means taking this and setting it equal to zero. Negative x to the fifth minus x cubed plus 6x is equal to zero. So I see that I can factor an x out of this, and I know I'm gonna have to factor what's left, and it's always easier to factor if your first coefficient is a positive number. So I'm going to factor out a negative x. That gives me x to the fourth plus x squared minus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, so I have negative x equals 0 and I have x to the fourth plus um, x squared minus 6 is equal to 0. Ignore that part right there. Now from here, I get x equals zero. So that's partially solved. I've got one of my zeros right here. All right, now let's look at this. If you recall from chapter one, this is something that's called quadratic in form. What we have is we have the same base right here, and this exponent is twice this one. So what we wanna do is we wanna make a substitution. Let u stand for x squared. And what that means is that u squared is the same thing as x to the fourth. So we can rewrite this as u squared plus u minus six is equal to zero. Okay, so this factors, if I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to a negative six and that add to a positive one, I can use positive three and negative two so this factors as u plus 3, u minus 2 is equal to 0. So u equals negative 3, and u equals positive 2. Now we weren't asked to find u, we were asked to find x. So undo your substitution. This would say x squared is equal to negative 3, and here x squared is equal to to 2. Now if we take the square root of both sides right here, we get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 3, which is x is equal to plus or minus i square roots of 3. Now this is a complex number. If you were just asked to find, to find the solution to this, this is definitely part of your solution. But we're using this to find our x-intercepts, and we don't have imaginary x-intercepts, so this doesn't give us any. But right here, if we take the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of two. So we do have two x-intercepts right here. So our x-intercepts are, I get zero, 
and I got zero one time, so this is multiplicity of one, which means we touch, we cross here, sorry, because one is an odd number. I have an x-intercept of the square root of two, which is approximately 1.4. I got positive square root of two one time, so its multiplicity is a one, and we also cross right here. And then I got negative square root of two, which is approximately negative 1.4. And I got that answer one time. And I also cross right there. Okay. These two, even though they were solutions to this, they're not x-intercepts. Okay. So let's do part three. And three was to find the y-intercept, which means we plug in zero. So f of zero, if I plug in zero up here, six times zero is zero. I'm keeping track down here. I can't get it all on the screen at the same time. Zero cubed is zero, minus zero to the fifth power is zero. So our y-intercept is zero. Part four is to find symmetry if we have it. So we're looking for even, odd, or neither. And when you have a polynomial, you can just look at your exponents. Let's look at our exponents here. The understood exponent on that is a one. So my exponents are one, three, and five. And since all of these are odd, we have an odd function here. And that means we have origin symmetry. Okay. Okay. So that's going to help me out. I, this information, I should be able to make sure that I am symmetric when I do my basic graph. Okay. And then the last step is the maximum number of turning points. And remember, this is the degree minus one, so it's five minus one. So I am allowed to have a maximum of four turning points. Again, we don't have to use all the turning points, but that's the maximum number I am allowed to have. Okay, so let's put all this information together on a graph so we can see what we've got. Okay, I know that it rises on the left and it falls on the right, so I'll make that happen. My x-intercepts, I have one at zero. And I have one at uh, the square root of 2 and one at the negative square root of 2. So that's about 1.4 and negative 1.4. Okay. This happens to be my y-intercept as well. So um, I didn't get another point out of that. Now, again, you can just do a basic sketch here if you want to. Okay. So basically... My graph is going to look something like this. I'm going to come in like this. I know I have to cross at this x-intercept. And then I have to turn around and come back up here. And then I have symmetry. So however much I went down here, that's how much I go up here. And then I'm going to exit like this. Okay. Now, if you'd like to, you can plug in some values to find out how high up you go down here and here. But again, on most of your homework of problems, you're going to have three or four, maybe five graphs to choose from, and you'll pick the one that fits your information. Um, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to find, let's find f of 1. So if I plug in 1, it'll give me an idea how far up this bump goes right here. If I plug in a 1 right here. I have 6 times 1, which is 6, minus 1 cubed, which is minus 1, okay, minus 1 to the fifth power, which is 1, so this is 4. So I have this point right up here. Now I know I have an odd function, so that should tell me that if I plug in negative 1, 
I will get the same number value except opposite signs. So if I plug in negative 1, I will get negative 4, which tells me this goes right down to here. So again, I get a better idea of how big these bumps are. I come in like this, cross at this x-intercept, come down to here, and turn around. That should be smooth. It's hard for me to get a graph right there. It's not pointed. You come up to here, and then come up to here, and then turn around, and exit off of your graph. Okay? Now, just the information we had forced some of this to happen. It rises to the left and falls on the right. That's what happened here. We found our x-intercepts, and we knew that we crossed at each one. Our y-intercept was the origin. We knew had origin symmetry, and that happened. The maximum number of turning points we were allowed was four. We only used two, and that's okay. You don't have to use them all. You just make sure that you didn't use more than what you were allowed. And here you have a decent idea of what your graph should look like.